Time for another market review, and this one you're gonna wanna stay until the end of the video because things have changed. Normally in these market reviews, I give you a breakdown of what's going on, and the answer at the end is that the bull market is still intact. And that's what you've been hearing for the last however so many months I've been doing these videos. It's been a long time. But now we're going into a transition period. So it might not just be, hey, the bull market is gonna continue. So let's talk about it. And of course, we got Makarovs to help us as always. So as Alex says here, the big question on all of our minds is where do we go from here? If we're looking at the market right now, we had a huge reversal on Friday, which was a bullish sign. And now it looks like we're going up today. And this is Monday midday. So I mean, it could still turn around, but that seems to be what's happening so like was this just a dip or is this the start of something bigger and because of what's going on with the coronavirus that's a really tough question it's actually like impossible to know now in the past when we were doing these videos and the market had some volatility it was because of things like the yield curve inversion the repo rate stuff everyone thinking a recession was coming and those were all easily disproved by our research and we knew where to look like it wasn't that complicated but the coronavirus is finally one thing that could be a huge tail end risk so it could be the catalyst that pushes our hyper leveraged global economy over into the abyss or not really tough to tell. And the reason it's so tough to tell with the coronavirus is because we don't have good information and no one has a real good scope of what's going on with it. There's a lot of uncertainty, which, you know, the market hates uncertainty. So we already talked about before how this sell off was inevitable because we had a lot of speculation, valuations were too high and, you know, all that good stuff that makes the market ripe for a correction. But the extreme at which the market fell was surprising. And that's because now the market is waking up to how uncertain things are with this virus. In the short term, we should definitely expect the market to swing wildly as it's doing right now. And there's going to be a lot of volatility. But then longer term, it's really tough to tell because there's a lot of different potential things that could happen. So this virus already ensures that this V-shaped recovery will be U-shaped at best and L-shaped at worst, meaning this isn't going to be a nice quick up and down, meaning this drop isn't going to recover nice and quickly like we've had before. Like remember back in January, this drop, this is going to be tougher than that. And the issue is, is when you're trying to minimize the spread of this disease and the people getting infected, you're also maximizing the economic toll because the more you quarantine and, you know, keep everyone in their houses, the less economic activity there is. But if you don't take care of the virus, there's a much greater cost down the line to the economy and, you know, to people in general. So you're screwed either way. That's really the situation. Now, Alex is going to have another report later this week that dives into the coronavirus more. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. And with the market being so volatile, there are good potential trades out there. It's just you're not going to be holding as long long term as before. And the stocks we look for with our explosive stocks checklist, those are the type of things that could really take off. So if you want to see how we find those stocks that could work pretty well, then get our checklist down below. There's a link in the description and comments. Now, if we take a look at the S&P, if you remember in the last video, I was talking about monthly candles, how they're a really good signal. Well, in January, we kind of got this bearish reversal candle, a doji right here. And then for our February candle, we got a really, really bearish reversal. This is an ugly bar right here. And because of how bad this candle was, and we didn't see the reversal towards the end of last week. Well, we did see a little bit, but not enough. Well, this means the probabilities are much higher for further downside in the next one to three months, or at least chop sideways. It'll be a mixture of both. Now on a weekly basis, the S&P closed at its lower Bollinger Band, meaning it's very, very oversold. So what you're likely gonna get are big rallies here because the shorts will be covering their positions and to cover, you know, they have to buy. But then as the market is going higher, the bulls are gonna start selling their positions because they don't wanna be trapped in them. So then you'll get another leg lower. See odds favor a whipsaw action with strong bull legs followed by equally intense sell-offs over the next couple of days or weeks. And what you're gonna see at the end of it is the market retest or even make new lows. This is just all a part of the volatility. So like right now, the action looks really good, but no, this sadly is not likely the bottom and you remember that rule the strongest rallies occur in bear markets which again why there is still opportunity in the equity market you just got played a little tighter and if you look at semiconductors which are usually the leader for the market they go and then the rest of the market follows when they got above their bollinger band here and this is the monthly candle they had a big reversal too so that's another signal that we got some downside ahead of us another thing we could look at is market breadth so this mcclellan oscillator which measures advancing versus declining stocks hit a record low last week it's never never been this low, meaning tons of stocks were falling. And at one point last week, 80% of stocks were trading below their lower Bollinger Bands. That's only happened two other times if you look down here over the last 15 years. So those two are extreme readings, but if
if we look at the percent of stocks trading above their 200 day moving average, it hasn't hit that low yet because this green line is 20%. And if you hit that or below, it usually marks the bottom of the sell off outside of recessions. So we still got some room to go here, but it is nearing extreme oversold levels. Implied volatility on puts hit an eight year high, meaning there's a ton of panic as investors try to buy, you know, put protection. But if we look at the long term put to call ratio, it shows that, you know, there still isn't enough fear. And bullish sentiment is still a little too elevated. It needs to hit this green line down here. Then that means people are bearish. So the conclusion from all that is that we are deeply oversold, but we could still sell off more. But again, we're likely to see the market whip back and forth over the next few weeks. The long term charts favor sideways to lower action over the following months. And it's going to be that long until we have more visibility on this virus anyway. And they're connected. So it does make sense. But if we do get clarity on this virus soon and it's positive, like more positive than people thought, then we're going to have a huge, huge rally because we have yields at all time lows. The risk premium spreads are nice and wide. And that just means the stock prices have come down in this big drop. So there's a lot more earning potential by putting your money in there because it's not as overvalued. Then, you know, Trump is harping on the central banks already. They're going to start loosening again to help with this. And governments are spending more money. It's just a great environment for a bull market apart from this huge unknown, the coronavirus. So Alex thinks that the market isn't even pricing in the virus properly. Like they need to be more scared because the risk of recession within the next 12 months have risen considerably. So if things get worse with coronavirus, which they very well might, then the market could be at the start of a topping process. But market tops last, you know, 10 months on average before an official bear market kicks off. But that's what I mean when I said that this is very different than our analysis before, because you know, you got to stay fallible in the market. So as new information presents itself, you need to change your thesis. And now we are getting more bearish. But the only thing that we know right now is that there is going to be more volatility. We need to wait and see as more information about this virus comes out and what its impact is. But like I said, this is more of a trading environment. So if you can find these high flying stocks that are exploding, you can make some money quick and jump out. And this explosive stocks checklist is really good for that because that's the kind of stocks that it finds. Again, link down below in the description comments. Don't forget to check it out. It's free. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because we're going to do another one of these reviews. We're going to dive into the coronavirus a little more and game out the probabilities of what might happen. If you want to see that, subscribe so we can talk about it in the next video. Stay fallible out there. Bye.